Hello everyone. Uh, I am Dr. Shafat Raza. Uh, I am a long to Pakistan. Uh, I am a clinician with uh, experience of uh, six to seven years in clinical medicine. Uh, I am currently working in the department of internal medicine uh, as well as emergency medicine. Uh, I am also been uh, into this research experience for past three to four years almost now with uh, last. Well, three years being quite uh, engaging uh, with research, writing, publishing, and uh, related things. Uh, today, uh, with uh, this other AID platform, I will be talking a little on this uh, storm of AI uh, in uh, uh, healthcare and, in particular, uh, research, writing, publishing, uh, and there are a lot of you know. There's a flood of uh, talk on the AI tools uh, and different AI tools emerging every day here. But this uh, advent of AI tools, this advent of science that no doubt uh, has made the life quite easier than before. But at the same time, there is a lot of confusion. There is a lot of mixture of ideas. There is, you know, um, different opinions coming from different people that, oh, uh, should we use it, should we not use it, how to use it. So there are too many questions surrounding this AI, academia, and in particular when it comes to the research in the healthcare. If some of you will be following top medical journals like New England Journal of Medicine, like in JAMA Network and such journals, so uh, now they have regular, uh, you know, publications regarding to this AI in healthcare. Uh, they have separate sections of AI, like in uh, New England Journal of Medicine AI. So they are more uh, into the different tools and algorithm and new uh, AI applications. They are actually. Uh, looking at the patient data from these hospitals and these countrywide data and making, uh, you know, uh, decisions regarding the uh, clinical utility. How can they predict the different variables like mortality, like hospital discharge and this. this. But, uh, you know, use of AI for writing, publishing and, you know, uh, in some cases now in the analysis as well uh, of the research. Uh, projects is gaining a lot of interest, especially among the young researchers, young clinicians, uh, and as well as the senior clinicians as well. So there is a lot of uh, you know enthusiasm for this AI because they are so many fascinating tools, uh, and uh, you know people are just uh, rushing behind them. Now the question here is: Is it all real? Is that hype worth it? When did uh, AI storm came into health and academia? It was November 2022 when the chat GPT was launched to the AP, open API platform. And you can say that uh, that chat GPT is the mother of AI. And then there are have been uh, there are a lot of, uh, you know, uh, tools. They are being released every day online and people are just so fascinating. And, you know, you just wish to learn all of them. But Actually, you don't need to learn every AI tool because every AI tool, you know, serves more or less different purpose. They have different features. They have different capabilities. So all the AI tools that are being developed, they are not for every person. They are not for every field. They are not for every kind of uh, academia. I am specifically talking related to healthcare, medicine, and, you know, uh, this medical research, writing, and publishing. So... Uh, the answer to that question is that, see, AI, just like any other tool, just like computer, just like uh, your smartphone, just like your internet, AI is the next level advancement. AI has made the tasks quite easy for you. It has made your work quite easier and it serves a purpose to save you time. You know, in traditional ways, when we uh, used to research, you know, uh, we uh, for topic selection, selecting a topic, we used to, you know, go and search the literature for days and weeks and discussing with colleagues on traditional, uh, you know, databases like PubMed, Google Scholar and others. So we used to very, uh, you know, it was a very tiring process. The searching is a very tiring process. It's a very 
uh, you know, daunting task to search on uh, Google and, you know, on PubMed, Google Scholar, uh, play with those keywords, those Boolean operators. And then there are many things. There are, all, you know, there are too many uh, research items are published. Uh, and it's very difficult to get the specific answers to reach the certain levels. So what AI has done that it has just made that process so easy. There are many AI tools, go and use them and, you know, find a research question in just a very uh, limited time and from minutes to a few hours you can find. You can come across the uh, relevant literature in just a few minutes and you will be finding the related articles very quickly. And there's, there are other tools, you know, read those, you know, sources, those papers quite efficiently. If you don't understand a very difficult task, you're not uh, able to understand any complex talk and complex uh, data set there. Uh, AI just makes it so simple for you to gain access to that, to understand that. And then just break that complex ideas and messages into very simpler ones. Now, chat GPT, you know how it makes the thing easier. You can create the ideas from chat GPT. You can ask GPT to uh, give you the research gaps on a certain topic. It will create you, give you very beautiful summaries of different research gaps. It will give you different research ideas. You can ask it to generate a whole, uh, you know, uh, template for a cover letter writing to a professor, to a university. Everyone is not master at it. Everyone is, uh, does not know how to write it. There are problems. But it just gives you a very expert template. Only thing you have to do is to just replace that template with your particulars, with your original data. It's, you have not to copy paste the chat GPT written things uh, for any other process because chat GPT does not know you. Chat GPT does not know uh, what is your purpose. Uh, or you cannot write a whole paper with chat GPT. They ask you to write a paper for uh, me on, say, for example, malaria prevention. It will write random things, but you cannot consider it as a paper and publish somewhere because your research question is a something specific that you have designed, that your team has designed, that has its own purpose. It answers a particular research question. So what you can do is you can take the idea, you can take the research gaps from there, you can take the templates from there. And what else? Uh, you can say that, okay, I'm going to write a, this paper and with this title, just try and create a good introduction for me. It will create the introduction for you as per your instructions. Now, what has it done? Now, what this chat GPT did, that it give you a very beautiful idea of it will write introduction for you, but you do have not to copy paste that. Okay, it's been saving my time. I'll copy paste it and I'll publish. No, it is given you, okay, that for this topic particular, you can write the introduction in this way. It will give you a beautiful two, three paragraphs and you can follow that pattern. If you are new, you don't know if you're not that good at writing, it will just give you a very expert kind of template and it will give you OCAC, for example, introduction. It has written only four paragraphs and it has initially written the background of that topic then something related to the available in literature, then a few, uh, you know, a paragraph on a single paragraph on your research question, the gap, and it comes to in the end how to, uh, you know, create the objective from that. So just instantly you got the idea, okay, I have to write introduction in this way. So go and find few articles in that way related to those particular themes straight away and just write your introduction. It will hardly take one to two hours and see how it uh, makes the things easier similarly if you have written your methods that could be somehow random that could be how some be, uh, somehow there could be some mistakes but you can write into chat gpt or any other ai tool and ask it to just refine this method section for me how i can better write this and chat gpt will show you okay how you can better write this it does not mean just copy paste the text generated by chat gpt it gives you that this is the way you can write it rather than asking rather than asking someone senior looking into other reading too many papers and still getting confused it straight away just gives you okay do this similarly if you're writing a cover letter uh, to any journal to any professor just ask it to i'm uh, doing this work i'm sending this publication i'm sending this uh, cover letter to a professor just write this for me and it will give you a whole very beautiful template of cover letter only thing you have to do is to just follow its pattern not the content a second thing is uh, which is a most, again, very difficult task and it's a very time-consuming task when it comes to research writing and this research process. It's a literature review. 
Now, literature review is the backbone of any kind of research, and it takes a lot of time. It's very tiring. Everybody can not afford to uh, master a literature review. Everybody does not have that much time to you know, spend weeks and months with a literature review. And there are now tools that have made a literature review very easy and very you know, fast. Uh, some of the tools I will have personal experience with that I found very useful. Uh, they are like the tools like LitMaps. The other tool called as a Research Rabbit. Uh, Research Rabbit is totally free. You don't have to pay anything. It's a very good uh, literature review tool. Another uh, tool that I'll be uh, quoting that's SciSpace. Uh, SciSpace is a very beautiful tool. It's a very you know, great tool. It's a tool that you can use for literature review, finding literature uh, relevant to your topic, and you can extract the data simultaneously from the different papers with just few clicks, uh, be the data of related to title, be data related to methods, results, limitations. It will just take the data from size page from those papers rather than reading those papers. It will just extract the data for you from PDFs and just copy paste into your Excels and then use it in your paper as per your uh, requirement. Then there is another very good tool that is Consensus AI. It is also a very good tool for academic writing. It has a lot of features related to the some uh, tools I just talked about. So very good tool. And obviously, uh, you have uh, got certain uh, writing tools like Jenny AI. It has a lot of good features for writing uh, and citations, but it has a paid, uh, you know, subscription. So if you can pay, then it's really good for you. Another thing that you can do with AI to fasten your research process, to make your research process very efficiently, that uh, you can take the critical feedback from the AI. Rather than after writing your paper and you are just confused oh, whether my paper is written well or not, whether uh, it is critically uh, good or not, whether how the uh, peer review will comment on this. So before publishing your paper, you can take a critical uh, analysis, a critical feedback of your work from the AI, like I said in the uh, chat GPT-4, another tool called as a u.com. It's a very good AI tool. It's very good for your analysis. It's very good for your critical feedback. You can just upload your final manuscript there on either ChatGPT4 or u.com or any other AI tool that is for academic writing. Upload your document and just ask it to give a, a critical feedback of your work to uh, tell you the limitations and strengths of your paper and tell you uh, where your paper is deficient and where there is a room for improvement. And literally within seconds, it will, uh, you know, comment on your manuscript, on your paper, so uh, critically and efficiently, then, you know, you will come across, okay, the, the, my paper is lacking here and here, and these are the problems. And, and before submission to any journal, conference, or at a senior, you can just polish those things. You can edit those things. And again, ask for a critical feedback. And this is how you can make your research process so, uh, you know, improved and efficient before uh, submitting to any journal, your supervisor, or any other platform. So what is the summary of all this? The summary of all this that chat GPT and other AI tools has not replaced the human mind, the human creativity, the human critical sense completely. Chat GPT will not do all the things on behalf of you. It's uh, totally rubbish that you will write a paper in minutes. You will write a paper in one hour with uh, AI tools or Chat GPT. AI does not know what is your research question exactly. It does not know what you are going to do. What is your purpose? It is you, the researcher, who has the critical mind, who has the research question, who has the purpose, and who will carry out whole the process. Your research is your creative work. And uh, when I'm talking creative work, especially in the healthcare, your research, your answers, your results, they are going to impact the policies. They are going to impact the clinical practice. They are going to impact the quality of life and life and death of the human beings. So you cannot 
rely on a machine at least for now to just do everything for you because AI has no responsibility. Keep it in your mind that AI has got no responsibility, no credibility. It is the author. It is a researcher and it's a clinician. And it is the one who reports something is responsible for whatever he or she is reporting and publishing. So just uh, so keep in mind your research is your research. It is not the research of AI. Research is a very rigorous process. Research is a very time-consuming process. And it is a hard work, creativity, and a mixture of a lot of things that at the end bring some results. And those results are very important to the mankind the life of the people, to the quality of the life of the people. So uh, still AI cannot replace this. You are the owner of your research. You are the owner of your results. So you will only be responsible for that. Therefore, a best strategy for using AI in research is to use it for helping you, for saving your time, for making you more efficient, for giving you critical feedbacks, for uh, you know, uh, for helping you how to structure the things, how to write the things better, what to include and what to exclude in a certain process, uh, and ultimately how to become better and better every day on something you do. So this is how you can efficiently use the AI, whether it be ChatGPT, whether it be you.com and other tools that I discussed. But do not replace yourself with AI because it's still in a medical background. No any journal is going to accept a whole paper written by AI. Then what kind of researcher will be? you will be? If it, everything is done by AI, I think there is then no need of researchers, then there is no need of academia because it is, uh, uh, AI is doing everything. So it, uh, does it mean that uh, we should stop uh, doing research? Should we stop writing research? Should we stop carrying out the research projects and let everything to AI? No, the answer is no. So these things are here to help you just like the Google is helping you for decades, just like uh, the Gmail is helping you, just like the Microsoft is helping you. But this is, I say, the next level of advancement that makes you a thousand times more efficient than before. So uh, use these uh, technologies and AI tools for making you better, for making the lives of uh, mankind better than before and just making you more and more efficient in this process. So that was all for today. I hope that this talk really would help you in engaging with AI. And uh, I request all of you to please like and subscribe to the AID YouTube channel uh, for learning more on the research and academia and improving your research journey. Thank you. 